Hey friends, welcome back. Today I'm super excited to share with you my journey on how I passed the Certified Kubernetes Administrator or the CK exam. So I passed the CK exam last month with a score of 90 out of 100, which is a really good score. For those of you who might not be familiar, the CK exam is a hands-on test designed to validate your skills in managing, operating, and troubleshooting Kubernetes, which is a powerful and flexible open source container orchestration tool developed by Google. Essentially, Kubernetes makes it easier to manage containerized applications across different computing infrastructures. My journey with Kubernetes started when I joined 16-bit as a part-time intern this was also the time when I came to Canada to pursue my MSc in Applied Computing at the University of Toronto. Before that, my expertise was mainly in machine learning and software engineering, and I didn't have any experience with infrastructure that runs all of this. But at 16-bit, I got involved in an eight-month-long full-time internship where the project was based entirely on developing infrastructure to deploy and manage AI-based medical software across hospitals at scale and Kubernetes happens to be at the core of this project. So how did I prepare for the CK exam? I kicked off my learning with some courses from CodeCloud. It's a really good place to learn technical concepts related to cloud computing and infrastructure. I took their Kubernetes basics, CKA and CKAD courses. These were fantastic in laying down the groundwork for my internship, especially because these courses have hands-on exercises. And if you're wondering, this video is not sponsored by CodeCloud. I personally learned a lot from their courses, so I thought it's worth sharing with everyone. One key thing I did was take extensive notes while studying these courses, which came in handy later when I was revising before the actual test. I started learning Kubernetes through these courses at the start of my internship, got to work hands-on with Kubernetes during the internship, and finally took the exam in November. Having these notes was a lifesaver because it allowed me to quickly revise everything without having to go through the course material all over again. And guess what? I've shared the link to my notes in the description below for all of you to access for free. Before taking the actual test, I completed all of the Code Cloud's CKA practice tests. There are 10 of these and they're excellent for getting a feel of the actual exam. I'll leave a link below to Code Cloud's CKA learning path. It includes all the relevant courses you should take to get to the CKA exam and practice test. I personally took all of these courses over time, but feel free to skip some of them depending on your skill set. Now let's talk about the exam format. CKA is a two hour test where you perform tasks on a remote desktop. It is completely hands-on with no multiple choice questions. The questions have different weights and the number of questions may vary. In order to pass, you need to score at least 66%. You're allowed to access Kubernetes documentation throughout the exam, which is super helpful. So you don't have to memorize the structure of Kubernetes manifest files for different resources. The exam originally cost 395 US dollars, but I registered for it at a discount. So I got it for 319 US dollars. And thankfully, the cost of the exam was covered by 16 bit. You should never be required to pay the full cost of the CK exam. There's always some coupon code available that you can find that will give you 20 to 30% discount. Unlike other certification exams, when you register for CKA, you get a free retake within a year from the date you register for the exam. So even if you couldn't pass it in the first attempt, you still have another chance. For some reason, the CKA exam can only be taken online. There is no option to take it in person at a testing center. Quick pause everyone. Are you dreaming of studying abroad but overwhelmed by the whole process? Eduverse, my India-based team is here to help you. Our seasoned consultants provide personalized support for most study abroad destinations, including Canada. And guess what? Most of our services are either free or at a minimal cost. So don't miss out. Fill out the Google form in the description below to get started. And remember, your study abroad dream is closer than you think. Now let's talk about my experience taking this test. To begin with, taking the test online was horrible. I decided to take the test on my desk setup and not just on my laptop as I was more comfortable working on my monitor. The problem started with the proctoring setup where my webcam for some reason struggled to focus on my driver license, leading to a 30 minute delay while I contacted tech support. Then the proctor asked me to show my surroundings even under the desk. In doing so, 
my webcam got unplugged and my session was ended by the Pearson View software. So I had to start all over again and it took me one whole hour just to complete the proctoring setup. After this, there was a five minute delay in starting the remote desktop session, even though the exam timer had already started. So overall, the online test taking process was quite frustrating. However, the test itself was much easier than I expected. I got 17 tasks in total to complete and out of those, I left two for the end as they were lengthy. I finished the other 15 uh, questions in about one hour, giving me one hour for the remaining two questions. From this experience, I can say that the setup for proctoring via Pearson View was more mentally taxing than the test itself. Now for some tips to pass the CK exam. Practice tests are crucial. CodeCloud's practice tests closely mirror the actual exam difficulty. They're just a bit more difficult than the actual exam. So if you're doing uh, good on these practice tests, then you should totally be okay on the actual test. Another great resource is Killer Coda. It has several CK interactive scenarios, which are excellent for learning how to debug uh, Kubernetes clusters. It is completely free and you should definitely review it before the actual test. You also get a free test from killer.sh when you register for CK, but I found it extremely hard and not representative of the actual exam at all. So you can take it if you have time, but it's not going to help you much. Be comfortable with imperative kubectl commands and familiarize yourself with Kubernetes documentation. This will make you much faster at performing actions in the Kubernetes cluster. The remote desktop environment can be tricky, especially for Mac users. Your Mac shortcuts are not going to work in the remote desktop environment. So be prepared to adapt to Windows based shortcuts. Honestly, it took me a while to get adjusted to the remote desktop environment. Tackle easier tasks first and save the harder and lengthier ones for the last. This strategy gives you ample time to handle complex tasks at the end after you've completed the easy ones. Always verify your solutions at the end. So if a question asks you to scale a deployment, check whether or not your solution actually worked. And finally, copy variable names directly from questions. Don't type them out yourself as it may lead to typos. That was all I had to share today. To wrap up, remember that the CK exam tests your practical knowledge of Kubernetes more than anything else. With the right preparation and mindset, you're going to do great. Good luck and don't forget to check out my notes in the description. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. See you in the next video.